despite China being a major creditor of the United States, you might be able to see the political reasons that led the orange ape and his crew to attack China day in and out, day in and day out. If you, ha if, if you haven't been able to see it, here they are. First, the Trump gang needs a scapegoat for the disastrous impact that this virus, this pandemic, is having on the lives and the economic welfare of all of us. And this helps the Trump gang divert attention away from their own failings, away from how they've led this country into disaster and sickness and financial collapse. And second, it's helpful politically not morally, not socially, not from an ethical standpoint, no. But politically, it's helpful to demonize the other, whoever the other is. For years, it was the Soviet Union. It lets Trump play offense rather than defense by demonizing China and trying to get Americans to rally around the flag boys by his claiming that he is the protector of our country against these evil foreigners. Jesus Christ, this is like, this is like a nightmare. It is a nightmare. It is a total nightmare. Or maybe it's just me. The piece by Alan Sloan. Is it Alan or is it Robert? No, it's Alan Sloan. Come on, Mike. Get in the game. Alan Sloan, who, who is an economics writer, goes on. He says, even though the Fed has indirectly funded most of the re recent increases in our national debt, it's going to be interesting maybe really scary, to see what happens if the Fed's Treasury purchases keep slowing down. And even if they do, they'll still be very high by historical standards, according to Mr. Sloan. To see if the Fed's Treasury purchases keep slowing down at the same time the, treasury need, the Treasury's need to borrow increases. Does that make sense to you? No, it doesn't to me. I barely know what the hell they're talking about. Except it's one more calamitous crisis that this Trump mobster is pulling us into. Sloan writes, and we have to see if China attempts to counterattack Trump and undermine the dollar, and in that process, enhance the yuan, their money, as a reserve currency, by selling some of its existing treasury holdings, or by announcing that its days of helping finance U.S. deficits have come to an end. Now, in the capitalist system, the global capitalist system, that would not be normal financial behavior. Thanks to Trump and the Trump virus, these aren't normal times <laughs> by any means, right? And among the reasons Sloan writes is a factor that I don't think is being taken as seriously as it should be. It's this, Trump and the Republicans threat to cancel some of our debt to China to try to make the Chinese government pay for some of our costs of the pandemic. Cancel the debt. I, I, I mean, what happens if you try to cancel the debt on, on your mortgage payment or on your credit card payment? Oh, I know there are these companies out there that advertise this horse shit. Do you owe more than 10000 on your credit card? We can make it go away. No, they can't. But imagine if you tried to do this yourself. And Sloan says it's very easy, as I just did, to dismiss this as polit uh, political posturing. Well, not me, but, but, but Trump, you know, threatening to cancel some of the debt. 
But Sloan goes on, if I were a foreign lender, I'd sure be wary of lending money to the United States when it's run by a president who acts on impulse, rules by decree, and might just decide one day to declare the United States IOUs held by any particular country to be null and void, not worth the paper they're printed on. Ooh. So Sloan goes on to say, and he's almost at the end of this piece, that to me was just one more thing to scare the living hell out of me. But he says, his ease, or he says unless you think the Fed should print endless trillions of dollars to finance our budget deficits, and I don't, he adds, for reasons we'll discuss another day, but unless you think it's okay to print endless numbers of dollars, then we need lenders, especially foreign lenders, to help finance our budget gap by buying vast amounts of ultra-low yielding securities, which is what we're offering right now. He goes on, and insulting and demonizing our country's second largest creditor for domestic political reasons sure doesn't seem like the way to go about it. But that's Trump. Trump doesn't give a shit about any of this. Alan Sloan, writing at the Washington Post. So, yeah, this, this is a subject. I mean, let's be real here. This is a subject that you and I really don't pay that much attention to, do we? We just don't. And why should we? This is so far beyond our ability to have any influence in whatsoever. You and I are little tiny cogs in the wheel, if we're even cogs anymore. We are non-entities. We are the proles. We don't matter in predatory capitalism. And if we do, it's only only if we keep on buying shit, if we keep on working for slave wages. Isn't this becoming so crystal clear? I'm not enough of a um, political theorist or um, what's the word I'm looking for? A dialectician. To, to put all this stuff into revolutionary language, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, it, it's beyond me. I know what I feel. I know what I think. I just don't have the language to get it out there. But the language has already been spoken. It's already out there. This can't be sustained. It can't be. This being what we're in right now. And I don't mean the coronavirus necessarily, although that is adding to it. I mean the financial muck that predatory capitalism has brought to the entire fucking world. Go on YouTube sometime. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Go to YouTube and look up some of these so-called, um, I hate this term, third world countries, emerging uh, whatever they are. They're not emergency, uh, emerging democracies. Look at Modi in India. That's an emerging dictatorship. Brazil, emerging dictatorship. Philippines, emerging dictatorship. Half of Central Europe, emerging dictatorships. But take a look at some of the, uh, uh, the, the slum areas of uh, um, uh, Kolkata, or uh, um, some of the in other Indian, big Indian countries, or Af I'm sorry, cities, or big African cities in various countries on that continent. Take a look at how billions of people live. Because global capitalism has put us here. We can't keep doing this. I so understand Bernie Sanders'
fury at the futility of, of, of what global leadership is doing and leadership in this country. The futility of, of trying to fight against it. He tried. God knows he tried eight years ago. Four years ago. He tried this. I, I, I don't even know anymore. But he has tried. Bernie Sanders. And so have others. The, uh, the, the, the member of Congress from Queens, AOC, um, so many people, Adam Schiff, so many people have warned and warned and warned. We can't keep doing this. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. You have your choice. You can listen to the ranting with the audio podcast or listen and watch me lose control with a video podcast subscription. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.